and before I forget, came from geological survey of Slovenia. My field of expertise is economic, geology, and geochemistry. Uh, <coughs> and um, uh, Steve and Hilko were talking about how to extract uh, data from the robot and to, to, to then to uh, transform it into the useful format for geologists. And this presentation will focus on what can geologists uh, obtain, what useful information can be obtained from this data. Um, in, in the UNXP project, we have five trials, and after each, and the trials were, were made, basically meant to see the robot capabilities, and then during, between the two trials, to improve the robot, to, to uh, recalibrate it, and to improve it to be better and better and better until the end of the project. Um, with, within these files, we also we produce many useful data. I will show you some of them today. Uh, first, some photos to get an impression of how this testing looks like and how this actual survey of flooded mines looks like. The first uh, was Katia mine in Finland, open bit mine. Uh, we had first tested the robot in the shallow parts here. And later on, we moved to the deeper part here and uh, we constructed uh, some tents which served as the maintenance room and control room for the robot. This is the launch site. We used winch to put the robot into the water. Um, and that's it mainly. A uh, group photo from the Finland and we backed up and moved to Idria. So, uh, the second pilot was in the Idria Mercury mine in Slovenia. Uh, we unpacked the robot, uh, put it down like 120 meters below the uh, surface. First, first part with uh, elevator and the second part uh, with uh, winch to the water level uh, and then the robot explored the shaft. We also set up the control room on the surface and also you can see uh, here, here and also the workshop for maintenance and repairs inside. Uh, the third pilot was uh, Usherisa, the uranium mine. Uh, the access was a bit easier there because uh, the shaft, shaft uh, uh, is on the surface and the water level is not very deep, it's like uh, 10 meters deep. And uh, we used again winch to, to, to put the robot into the water. And then the robot explored the under the flooded parts. Some close up here. Again, uh, we set up the, the uh, workshop and the control room in the nearby building. Uh, the last geological uh, pilot, the mine pilot on the mine site, was in Ecto Mine in the UK. This is copper, lead, and zinc mine. This is the entrance uh, to, the, to the flooded part, and it took quite a bit of effort to transport 100 plus kilogram ball uh, in the rock on the rocky audit uh, without damaging it. So this is uh, some snapshots. Um, uh, launch site was constructed. Uh, there were three shafts there, three launch sites when uh, we tie the robot. Also, again, a uh, workshop next to the entrance to the mine in the one container and control room was set up in the nearby building located some 200 meters away. In total, 8 terabytes of data were collected during four mine trials, so that means on average 200 gigabytes per hour of operation. And this figure can rise up if all instrumentation is turned on, as Norbert said, to one terabyte per hour. So it's quite a big amount of data. Um, short presentation of scientific instruments. So also, already Norbert told it, and I will go instrument by instrument and present you some characteristic results and why is it useful for my company. Um, first, there are different uh, scanning sonars and lasers, structural device systems. With these instruments you can obtain nice point clouds. You can see spaces where are spaces underground, even large chambers. This can be very useful for mining company to adjust drill plans because you cannot drill through the hole. Um, you can also
approach to calculate the watering costs. You can, with good uh, point clouds, you can also measure some geological features. So like orientation of geological structures, deep strike, faults, and so on. And you can also put virtual reality googles and have a virtual, virtual walk through the flood part of the mine. The drawback is this huge amount of data and a lot of prep processing is required to remove false points, remove false echoes, and so on. The, the point clouds are nice. This is, for example, one point cloud of the shaft here, and you can see side openings, so on very well, and another one, a big chamber into the active mine. Uh, robot also has visible light cameras which find out that, that, that they are the best tool for geologists. Because on these cameras the quality is so good you can really uh, see a lot of geology, geology there. And with the information about the orientation and the position of the robot you can actually map the mine. Uh, the drawback uh, is that, that these images need to be manually processed so someone has to sit next to the computer, uh, watch the video, stop it, record it and watch again and so on. Assessments might not be super precise, but as I said, good enough. And uh, these visible lights are not very useful in the case of muddy water or need next to the zero visibility of, or if we have large openings, because you cannot see anything. Together with these point clouds and, um, and cameras, it's really possible to deliver nice geological cross-sections. Here are, here are the cross-sections of, of, of actual shafts. And this, is, this can be very, very useful results for the mining company. Even in the state as the robot is today. This, 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 the, the prototype we are having today can deliver this. Um, robot was also instruments to measure water and to sample the water. Here you have, uh, this is pH, pH, thermometer and water sampler. This is the one curve of pH, and you can see, for example, that the water on the surface is, is more alkaline and then it goes more to, towards neutral during the deep. Um, why is this uh, important? If you, if company decides to dewater the mine, they know what are we dealing with. If the water needs some sort of treatment before it is into the environment, which can drastically increase the costs, and so on. So this, all of this instrumentation can be can be very useful. Also in the case if the mine flooded part has some active tectonics, some hydrothermal activity or some de degassing, this is also very useful information for the mining company before reopening the mine. Drawback, pH electrode must be constantly calibrated to, to, to get accurate measurements. And uh, regarding the water sampler, you can sample small amounts of water, but still, which might not be very representative, but still, uh, good enough to perform chemical analysis. Ultraviolet, with ultraviolet camera, you can detect floor scent minerals. You can see the same scene in visible light and in ultraviolet light. Um, robot also has a uh, multispectral camera. We created a uh, calcite, automatic calcite detection system with this. As you can see here as an example. So we tested, uh, we calibrated it using machine, machine learning tested it into the real rocks and, and, and the results are very, very promising. We wish, but this later, we wish to extend the number of minerals here. So, ultraviolet, multispectral units, ultraviolet also can be regarded as one spectrum, can detect some minerals even today and can easily detect fluorescent minerals because they really come out of the, of the darkness. Again, huge amount of data. Uh, superimposing of images takes a lot of time at the moment because while the robot takes images it moves a bit but images still need to be pixel by pixel one above other and automatic mineral detection algorithm is not ready to be used today. Um, gamma ray counter can detect increased rates of gamma radiation which it, it also in the water which can be very use, useful in case of some uranium mineralization or in case of some geological mineralization, so potassium rich rocks like pegmatite, for example, rare earths and lithium kinds of pegmatite, for instance. Um, but more tests of this might be necessary. So if you can see here characteristic graph of, of, of gamma radiation, <coughs> it was robot uh, above the water in the air, then it was lifted into the water, you see some difference, 
and then it was well, put out of the water, you see the sharp increase, and this is because of radon radiation in the shaft, and so on. So it's, it's useful instrument. Magnetic field meter and sub-bottom profile, so magnetic field meter. With magnetic field you can detect uh, a lot of features with associated with magnetism and remanent magnetism. So it's very common with all iron or chromium ores or some igneous bodies. Unfortunately, it hasn't been tested in real conditions. And sub-bottom profiler can, can measure bottom floor but cannot bring a lot of new information uh, because structure and light system and its sonars are not good enough. Um, so, I will conclude with two slides. Uh, why is it UXR one robot useful today? Now, it can detect large for mining companies. It can detect large submerged openings, tunnels and caverns, even important event with water with zero visibility. So it can really precisely measure things even if there is very murky water. In clear water you can clear water so you can expect you can, you can get very good visual you can perform very good visual inspection of the exposed rocks. You can and this are is allowing geologists to map geological features. Um, and you also can measure geological, orientation of geological plates. Can assess the water quality, bring water for, for further analysis. This is very useful also. In specific cases, it can detect some minerals. Um, and uh, shopping list for the future. Uh, we are starting the new project UNEX up uh, next year, and maybe we will address some of these issues to further improve the robot. A uh, big wish is automatic onboard mineral detecting system so that it can really detect some minerals based on multispectral information. Of course, very good addition would be XRF, uh, X ray, some, some chemistry, some device to measure chemistry like mineralogy. Very nice. Uh, point clouds would be a bit better, like less air holes, less false points, and, and maybe better resolution. Hope that, 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 that geologists can able to, to measure something on that. Magnetic fields, I already mentioned this. Less maintenance, fewer operators during the dive. I think we will address this in your next meeting. Um, and that the robot improve its precision in, in locating. Uh, during the dive. Uh, maybe I might, might add uh, also the shorter time between the robot brings the data and the geologist gets the data. So we have drastically improved this from days to hours, but still it would be very useful to improve it even further from hours to minutes so that the geologist can instantly start looking at the data on the field and then can, can like suggest the next area of operation and so on. So uh, I will conclude that. Uh, thank you for your attention. And I will give the stage to Richard Shaw, who, who comes from the Act of Mine, and he will present you what the actual mine operate, the experience of actual mine operator uh, with, with, with this robot. Richard.